For a two-player game or the three-player variation, all players take on the dual role. This means they will make decisions for both the dragon and the mouse, which differs from the four to six-player game where you're partnered with another person. For setup, you'll have your coins grouped to the side in easy reach of all players. Next, pass out the roll cards based off of the number of teams that are in this game. The team with the team one card takes the lead dragon token and will be the first player in round one. There are four decks with suns on the back of the card. These are your team goals. Notice there are four cards that are unnumbered. These are the beginner goals. If this is your first game, then please deal one card to each player. If this is not your first game, or if you would prefer not to play with the beginner goals, then place them back into the box. Make sure to pass out a deck to each player and place whatever remains back in the box. Now, once you have your personal goal deck, go through it and take out any cards which do not match your team count. So, if this is a three team game, please remove all cards with the two team icons on them and so forth. There are some cards that have both the two team and three team icons on them. Those are okay to stay in the deck. Just make sure to pay attention to which number you should be using based off of your team count. Shuffle your personal deck and set it to your side for later. Now take the treasure cards. They're the purple cards with the moons on the back. Shuffle them and place them in the center of the play area. Make sure there's enough room for a discard pile on the left. Treasures will give dragons special one-time abilities throughout the game that help them bend the rules or gain extra coins. The last deck with the dragon card backs is actually two different decks. This deck is made up of five different suits. Go through it and find all the rainbow gem cards, of which there are 15 total. Shuffle those and set them in the center of the play area. These are your trump deck. Now, shuffle the deck made of the four remaining suits, flame, magic, roses, and stars. This is your basic deck. Place it to the right of the trump deck with room for a discard pile on the right. Deal 10 cards to each player from the basic deck. These cards are not public information and are considered the dragon's hand for each player. Deal 5 cards from the basic deck to the center of the play area face up. These face up cards are considered the mouse hand, which will be shared by all players. These cards are open information. Because this is a two or three team game, take three cards from the trump deck and shuffle them into the basic deck. Now you're ready to start. Wicked and Wise is played over three rounds with five tricks per round. Each trick, the dragons will play two cards and mice will play one. Dragons play cards for their number, mice play cards for their abilities. And while mice only get to play one card, they are the only one able to manipulate the cards in play or get their partner powerful cards. While mice cards have numbers on them, those numbers again do not count towards winning the trick. Only the dragon's cards count for that. At the start of a trick, the player with the lead dragon token plays one card face up. It is the first of two cards they will play. This card sets the lead suit for this trick. That means that all other players must play a card matching that suit for the rest of the trick. If they have one in hand. If they do not, they may play any card from their hand. However, it will not help them win the trick. After the first dragon plays, turns will move to the right. If a dragon is unable to follow suit, again, they can play any card from their hand. However, they will not be able to win the trick. The exception to that are gem cards. Gem cards are trump cards, which means they're the strongest suit in the game. No players start with gems. The best way for a dragon to get them is for the mouse to use ability cards to draw and pass them. Gem cards automatically beat the highest number in a leading suit. If you are the only player who plays a gem card, you will win the trick. If multiple people play gem cards, the highest numbered gem will win. Gem cards can only be played if you do not have cards in the leading suit. They may also be used 
to lead a trick. After all of the dragons have played their first card, it's now time for the mice to play. You will use the same order that you used with the dragons. So starting with the lead mouse, you will take a card from the center of the play area and play it for its ability. The mice must follow suit if, a, if they're able. If there isn't a card in the center which matches the lead suit, then you may play any card for its ability. Once a card is used from the mouse hand, it is immediately replaced with a new card from the basic deck. The dual player who used the card is responsible for refilling the mouse's hand. When refilling, secretly check the new card to make sure it's not a gem card. If it is a gem card, place it in the mouse hand face down. Everyone will know it's a trump card, but they won't know its number or ability. If it isn't a gem card, then place it in the mouse hand face up. Throughout the round, the mouse hand will continue refilling, but the dragon hands will not. Dragons start with more cards than the mice, and they should have little to no cards left by the end of the round. After all mice have gone, it's again time for the dragons to play their second and final cards for the trick. The dragons will follow the same order they followed for the first card. So starting with the lead dragon, everyone will play their final card. And once all the cards have been played, the single highest card in the lead suit wins the trick. Again, if a gem card is played, then that gem will win or the highest gem will win if more than one was played. The winner grabs all of the cards played by both mice and dragons and sets them in a personal pile that they'll keep until the end of the round. The winner then chooses whether they want to take two coins or one treasure. If they pick treasure, they must draw two cards Pick one to keep and discard the other. The treasure they keep will stay face up in their area until they choose to use it. Treasures again let you bend the rules of the game or earn bonus coins. The dragon always controls the treasures and may hold up to three at a time. If this is a three player game, then they may hold up to two at a time. Treasures may only be played at the very start of a dragon's turn on each trick. So again, before they have played the first card of that trick. They are one-time use items. Once they are used, they are discarded. Dragons may use as many treasures as they wish on their turn. They don't always guarantee you coins, but often help you get more than a flat two coins per trick. Once you've picked your reward, the other players will get whatever's unpicked. So if you pick treasure, then the other players would get two coins. And if you pick the coins, then the other players will get treasure. The lead dragon moves to the right and the next trick can begin. I mentioned during setup that each team has goal cards. Goal cards have challenges on them, which they want your team to achieve. If you achieve your goal, you win the coin amount listed on the bottom of the card. If you do not achieve your goal, then you lose half the amount listed on the bottom of the goal. Some goals will have two icons on them. Those denote player count. So only look at the number by the icon which matches your team count. At the start of each round, players will decide on a goal to work toward secretly. If this is your first game, Players will use the blue sun cards, the beginner goals that I mentioned. If this is not your first game, or if you choose not to use beginner goals, then you will shuffle your team goals and draw four of them. Pick one to play face down and discard the other three. Once everyone has picked their goals, reveal them. They remain face up for the duration of the round. Each round, you will be drawing four goals and picking at least one to put in play for the round. However, as the rounds increase, so do your goals. So for round one, you can only have one goal active. For round two, it's possible to have two active. And for round three, it's possible to have three active. You do not have to make two or three goals active at a time, but you must always have a minimum of one goal active. Be careful 
with how many goals that you set because you lose coins for each one you don't achieve. At the end of a round, after the five tricks have been played, you assess your goals and divvy out coins accordingly. Dragons discard any remaining cards in their hand and the discard pile gets shuffled into the basic deck. So any of the trump cards that were played for that round will be shuffled into the basic deck and have the possibility of being dealt out for the next round. After the third round ends, all teams add up their total coins. Any unused treasures count for one coin. The dragon with the most coins at the end of the game wins.